But yes, that's me. The thing which survives even across death and can change bodies, change personalities and still be me. Okay? This is a profound question, who am I? And if you can find you, yourself in this way, not with words but with your awareness, yes, that's me. It's a tremendous freedom. Because you know you can never die. The body can get injured, the mind can get clouded, but I am always. Nothing can take away that. Okay, you knock out this body, I'll take another body and come back. What's the big deal? I am eternal, I feel that. Now it's not that we all live in that, but all of us are as if a continuation or a projection of that part, which is eternal. And that's why somewhere in us we have constantly this vague sense of immortality. There's an interesting question which is placed to Yudhishthir in the Mahabharata. There's an incident where the five Pandavas in the forest go to fetch water and each one going to the water does not return. You heard of this? Yes, <laughs> Yesterday, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, and the question which is asked, what's the most extraordinary thing? And the answer which Yudhishthir gives rightly is, although each one of us <coughs> has to die, everybody behaves as if we are immortal. And where does this sense come from? Because the fact is we are somewhere deep inside, the real me, of which Right now the me, which I feel, which I am aware of, is a kind of a frontal projection, which can be withdrawn, which can be dropped, and I can kind of relapse into real me. But right now there's a kind of an extension where I've lost my base of real me, but I'm a projection in front. So we give it a name, my self-awareness, which I call ego. There's a word used in the English language which does not have a sufficiently rich vocabulary to describe all these experiences. It's only in the Sanskrit language that you have a complete vocabulary. But the word used is soul. And because the English language is, does not have the, this precision of various inner experiences, it uses the word soul very vaguely. So first thing we experience is this, you say, oh poor soul, okay, soulful music, what do you mean by soulful music, music which kind of pulls at my heartstrings, I feel sad, unhappy or kind of nostalgic, we call it soulful music, something which touches me deep inside. But by soul normally is meant this kind of a centralized awareness. So when I say, who are you? This I which you feel, that's the a soul. The soul, you can say. But Sri makes a distinction, correcting the limitation of the English vocabulary. He calls it desire soul, as opposed to inner or inmost soul. Okay, so desire soul because the very character of my awareness right now, me, is that I am constantly pulled and pushed by the moment's desires. I want to do this, I hate doing that. All my life is basically defined by this movement. What do I like, what do I don't like? What am I comfortable with, what am I uncomfortable with? And I am literally flowing along the grooves of comfort. In a sense, if you look back at your whole day, Everything you did, everything, thoughts, feelings, actions, everything you did was in reaction to something else or an inevitable result of certain habits that you have, preferences, likes, dislikes. Observe your closest friend. You know them so well, you can predict everything they will do, down to details of which words they will speak when, in what response, how to provoke them to say or do something or not do something, isn't it? And each one of us is as predictable. It's just we don't want to face that fact. 
we are mostly lived we are not living we are lived by the pull and push of what my habits my preferences likes dislikes okay what made that i don't know i'm born with it some of it is shaped by the environment environment in which i grew up i have in a sense been since childhood i was made to eat certain types of food which so i have learned to like these and not like others on the contrary since childhood i was forced to eat certain foods but i never liked them so there's something which is an influence of environment something which is very distinctly me but still not me it's like inborn trait i just never liked it what's the rationale for it i don't know i want to like it but i can't i just hate that smell i hate that squishy feeling or whatever it is how many of you like crisp papad how many like soft papad and you'll find it's something very distinct you like it or you don't like it there's some people who hate papad because it gets sticky in the between teeth and there's some people who love that stickiness you have seen on milk the malai that forms some people love it some people hate it why there's no rationale to it can you change your like or dislike can you do the opposite learn to hate it or learn to like it you pretty much can't you are a slave of this imprint on your knee of your nature so now we start using two different words soul versus nature the imprint which is on me which is pretty much swaying me through life living my life my life is lived i don't live it that's nature a bundle of preferences likes dislikes